to be able to present to you our new KW Career Growth Initiative. Uh, so this is a very special program uh, developed by Cal Williams. It's really the tools that you need uh, to be successful in your business. And so what makes a successful agent? When you're making the amount of money you want to make, right? So that's, that's one, that's one test. That's one test for our personal lives, you know. Gary Keller says we need to make money in real estate so we can fund our Perfect. bigger life, right? Um, so that's what we want to see you do. And what Keller Williams now has done has come up with a set of tools to really, in a nutshell, help you build focus on the top 20% in the business. Because you always hear all of us talk about, right? Myself, Susan, Jennifer, anybody who's coaching you talk about you need to be focused on your top 20%. Because we all know that the 80% of the busyness in our business, okay, is what consumes all of our time and really nets us the least amount at the end of the day. So this is about developing, Keller Williams developing tools um, to help you focus on that top 20%. Just to give you a little background of what this came out of, um, this came out of something called the Growth Initiative. Uh, which was a company-wide um, initiative that started actually five years ago. And it was on the market center level for us to try to help our team leaders develop their focus on their top 20%, which was really growth and profitability. Okay, and that's the top 20% of the team leader. Now, under those, then there's a lot of other things um, because in prof to get to profitability, you need productivity and, and all of that. But the focus, their focus really had to be on growth, um, which was, of course, growing the companies, bringing more people into the companies, um, and, and getting it to profit. So that started five years ago. Now, I'm going to admit to you that I did not adopt this five years ago. Okay? I was one of those people that said, oh, this is kind of a corporate thing coming down on us, and you know, I don't want to be accountable, I don't want to you know, have to push my team leader that way, and you know, I don't want it to all be about growth, and you know, there's other things. So I was not an early adopter of the growth initiative. We adopted it in the second half of 2014, okay? Now, does anybody know, and, and I would say we really started pouring into this in the last quarter of 2014. Mm -hmm. And so does anybody know what our results were in 2015 from it? What was our best year ever? We grew the company like 30%. We grew our profits like 40%. We grew our profit share like 45%. Um, so it had results, and the reason we finally went on to it is because before, when we were still in the late adopter stage, we saw that there was an undeniable trend of market centers who adopted the growth initiative that their numbers just were soaring. So now that we've adopted it from the market center level, we see our numbers soaring. So all I can tell you is from the agent perspective, kudos to all of you for being here today, okay? <laughs> because you are gonna be the early adopter group. Uh, the company would like to see 60% of our company um, on, on the growth initiative and with their goals set up within the program uh, within the first, um, by September, what, September something? Yeah. So, um, yeah, so we, we are, we want our, we are really pushing to have all of our people on here because we know that it will be the tools that you need to propel your business forward. And it's really all about accountability and focus. So I want to talk to you a little bit about that. So the growth initiative uh, starts with you setting your goals. Um, then it goes through what are the Career World Initiative conversations and the tools, um, what's the value for the business, and you'll see that as we're going to go through it, and then what are the next steps that you're going to take, which we're going to take the next steps today. We're going to get you into the whole first part of this. So set your goals. Um, what are the goals you're going to 
set. Well, the first goal you're going to set is how much income you want. Now, that's not new to us, right? Because we're, when we do business planning, what do we always start with every year? How much we want to make. So um, that's going to start it. And what it's going to come down to is focusing on how many listing appointments you're getting every month, how many listings you're actually taking every month. So now, between those two, you're going to have to know your conversion rate. Okay? Um, then, okay, so there are two tools that are set up for this. One is a pipeline tool. Okay, who do you have coming into your world that's creating your pipeline of buyers and sellers? Okay, specifically sellers for those listing appointments and listings taken, because we all know that listings drive the business. Okay, and then if you're a buyer's agent or you're working with a lot of buyers, you also want to have a pipeline full of buyers too. So you're going to be wanting to track those. Uh, then you'll want to track how many listings you're taking every month. And you'll have a goal for that, okay? This program will calculate the goal for you. Not that much unlike the business plan does, okay? Then we have something between when you take a listing and when you close a listing. And we call that your wall of value, okay? Now, in Millionaire Real Estate Agent, Gary Keller talks about one of the first things as an agent, what do you need to do? Lead generate. Yeah, but besides that, value proposition. you need to create your value proposition. And so there are tools in there to help you do that. Um, some of you know what the lore is, the language of real estate. And we talk about that at our meetings, right? We, Jennifer shows you where we are, where the market is, and where we are performing against the market. Okay, we're going to show you in this how you benchmark yourselves against the market. And then how you turn around and use that in your listing presentations and buyer presentations to create value for the people that you're talking to. Okay, so um, that's in the trend tool, the lore tool, and the Google <coughs> expert is all going to help you really create your value proposition. Because I know even um, I've hosted some masterminds for some of our mega agents and mega agent teams. And when we talk about creating the value proposition, the first thing I always get is kind of a blank stare. Like, okay, my value proposition is I sell real estate. <laughs> um, so we want to have a little bit more, more meat in that for you. Uh, then, of course, it's, it's tracking your, your closings, um, with your listings and your buyers. And part of that is the listing management tool. And we'll be talking about different things in that listing management uh, that you'll need to be doing, like the seller feedback system. Okay, how, do you have a set plan, okay, to work with your listings for price reduction? Okay, are you doing it every few weeks? Are you sending them out uh, every week a recap of everything that, has, that you've done on their property and all of the views, all of the hits they've got on the internet, all the showing, all the showing feedback, so that you're setting them up to reduce the price and doing that in a systematic basis. You know, this business is really all about being predictable. And on the top there, the pipeline tool and the listing management, that's what creates your predictability. That's what ensures that you're going to have closings all the way through. And you're not going to have this business that goes up and down and is constantly throwing you into a cash flow calcium. And then last is um, profit. We really, um, we really don't even want to talk about income anymore. We want to talk about how much profit your business is making. Okay. And so this will, this is going to all tie together uh, with the tools now that that Keller Williams is giving. This is kind of how the tools are going to flow together. And so what's going to happen is you're not going to get all of this. We're not going to give it all to you today, okay? <laughs> you're not going to have to drink water from a fire hose here, uh, which sometimes it does feel like that with this company. Uh, we're going to go through the tools one by one over the next several weeks. Today, really, what we're going to do is we're going to go through and we're going to set your goals. And we're going to get those points of focus that you need. 
how many listings, how many buyers, how many appointments. And really, anyone who's done business planning before or has, is in coaching, you know that that's always the focus, right? Right, Anthony? Absolutely. <laughs> I've heard it over and over again. So again, the value for your business is really creating a predictable business. That's what we all want. We want to know that we have that income goal and that on a monthly basis, we have the cash flow coming in um, to support the profit that we want to make in our business throughout the year. So that's really the value to the business um, by itself. So the next steps are going to be, um, we're going to work a little bit before John Davis. I know that he's going to come on, he's going to talk a little bit uh, about um, the Career Growth Initiative at 2 o'clock. Um, but before he comes on, I want to have time to go through with you and to at least get you set up. Um, if we can do that before, that's great. If not, we will have a little time afterwards uh, to go over it as well. <laughs> Hello. Hi. <laughs> if it was anybody other than you, we weren't here. <laughs> 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 but we need our water. <laughs> I'll leave hot days. Okay. Uh, another thing that is it's also going to help us identify as we go through, and as you start tracking and, and looking and keeping your focus on these things, it's going to identify certain things in your business that you need to do. Maybe you need to take a night. Maybe you need to go to both. Maybe you need to have a coach and be in, in, in either productivity coaching here in the market center with Susan or with a max coach. So um, that's really what this will help us identify in the long term once you start using the tools on a consistent basis. So this is the conference call we're going to dial into. Uh, Maureen, how do I get to the regular screen? There should be a plan for me. Okay, so I need everybody to please go to your MyKW homepage. First of all, does anybody have any questions before we start? Who is this? Does this sound like it's going to be something that's going to help you with business? Yes. Are we excited about this? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> they should be. I will tell you, when I started in the business 26 years ago, I wish we had something like this. I mean, the tools that you guys have available to you, there is no other company even now that has these type of tools. So please use them, embrace them. Uh, they will help you with the business. <laughs> Did everybody sign in? No, that's what I did. Uh, okay. okay, is everybody to their home page on my Yes. Okay. So if you go to the education tabs, okay, on the upper left side, and you click on KW Connect. Okay. Now, for right now, you can click on this box, and actually, we're not going to, I'm not going to click on it right yet, because I want to show you something else, but within this box, um, actually, I will click on it, but that's a lot of it, there is a lot of things in here, um, showing you the full conversation, showing you the tools, there are a lot of videos in here, going through each tool. So if you want to get a jump start and you want to go through it, by all means, this is a great resource uh, on this page to do that. But going forward, when they're going to take this banner off, you're going to go to the Growth tab, okay, up on the top, and you're going to go to Career Growth Initiative. Okay. Now, on a 
a lot of yours, there should be a blue box. Yes. Okay, everybody has a blue box yes. that says, do yeah. you want to um, enter your goals, okay? Um, you're gonna you're gonna click on where it says view, just below there it says view full CGI calculator, like mine says there, okay? And you're gonna click that. Yeah, no, mine has to be What? Yeah, what do you okay. Yeah, yeah, like on the top. Next one. Next one. Oh, Next one. Oh, right. Next one. Oh, right. Next one. Oh, right. 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 Oh, so the class code that can be right here. Zero seven two five seven three nine two zero. Why they make you do that? Yes. It's the same it's the same as your site. It should go in then. I have it on. Yeah, go ahead. Anybody else need help? Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. You're set up already. Don't help me when you get there. I got to find my password. It's my automatic. You want? Yeah. Joyce, just submit. Submit it. No, just wait. You can tell you're the younger generation. <laughs> I'm already set up in it. Oh, you already have it. Okay. Yeah. Oh, oh, yes. Susan, so you might be able to do that. Oh, yeah. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> if we need it, we'll call you. <laughs> okay. So hopefully everybody's there. Yes? No. In the back of the room? Still, we're hoping to be there. Okay. No, I'm sure. Yeah. Oh, wait. Then we'll raise them one more minute. Did you get your set? No. They came in late. Sorry. Okay. See, that's, that's the stuff that like you have to scan the form. You have to go to your YKWP page. Yeah. So, 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 so,
the end goals and the CGI is what you're going to be called the catalyst. Okay, now, what they will do um, is they are making this so that at some point they're going to come out with a version 14. Okay, because obviously we're a team centric company too. Uh, so we are, we are going to be doing that. The company dollar cap, again, um, unless you're on a team or unless you are in the commercial division, your cap on this line should be $28,000. Unless if you're on a team, it's um, If you're on a team, it's only fourteen thousand dollars. If you're a buyer's agent, it could be less than that, depending on how many members on the team. So it's um, it's all different if you're on a team. Okay, then you're going to plug in the amount of your monthly expenses. Okay, now this number could vary. Depends. Do you have an assistant? Do you have what are your office fees? You know. Whatever your monthly fees are from your P and L. Again, that's why it's important that everybody here running their business should have their books on QuickBooks or some other accounting program because you have to be able to generate P and L every month, and you have to know what your expenses are every month. Yes. Give me like. Putting gas in your car, and must have expenses, tolls, yeah. I mean. That, that would be part of your expenses, yeah. 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 Again, it's going to be a little bit different yeah. for buyer's yeah. agents yeah. on teams, okay? Yeah. Uh, depending on, on how you're working, um, the expenses could be yeah. yeah. not really set up yet for the yeah. So, does everybody have an idea of their monthly expenses? And are you able to put that in? <laughs> Anybody have any questions about this monthly expenses? Gas and balloons. <laughs> and bottled yes. water. Well, you really should, you know, it's more than that. Everybody has 28,000. I love this that's the same on top, right? Twenty thousand. Yeah. Okay. John, what did you think the same? Um, the profit. Well, is that what you want to make? Is that the profit that you want to make? Oh, okay. So. Do you want to make hundred thousand? Do you want to make two hundred thousand? Well, hundred thousand is a nice start. <laughs> well, no, 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 no. Be realistic. This is this is in, in essence your your business plan. Okay. Now you're going to put in your average commission. Okay. So. Um, if, again, if you're handling mostly buyers, I mean, you're, you have to know your average Oh, wait, time out. <laughs> Maureen Coolahan. Okay. We have something great to help you. How many people know about the multi-year trend report that's on your MyKW for agents? Okay, one person. Well, you all need to know about it. So let, let me take a minute and go over there to show you where this is. Okay, right under your picture, okay, you'll see something called reports. Okay, if you click that report tab, um, yours is going to look a little different than your drop down than mine because obviously I get mine for the market center for lots of different things. But in there should be something there called associate, and within your associate, you will click your multi year trend report. Okay, if you've been an agent with the company for more than a year, where we would have multi years, Maureen is handing you out your report. Okay, this is showing you all of the various metrics of your business. Um, I'll just bring it up here so you can see. Who loves waiting for the report? Oh my god, in the beginning of the box, forget it. <laughs> so here you can see on mine, you can start to see the closed units. Okay, it's giving me the various years, um, and it, it's showing me one year to another. Now, so this year I'm not doing so well. Okay, my year over year, I'm down 19% in my closed units. Um, so it'll give you your sales volume, um, but my volume is up. 
so I had I had some big sales this year. Uh, but it'll it'll go through. Listing is taken, my listing is taken is down. So it's going to give you a lot of really great accounts for your business. And it's going to give you all those key categories that we talked about before. Your your written listings. Uh, so now in here, um, your average commission uh, is somewhere in here. Average sale price. Did, did somebody find our average commission on here? Right here, right? Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. I'm ready to get back. Uh, <laughs> right. I found it showed on here. I'm, I'm looking on this and I don't see it at all. All I see is the Yeah, average. I don't see it either. So yeah. I guess this is not going to help you with your average commission. Yeah. Uh, uh, there was average You'll have to know that. Lorraine, um, is everybody getting one that's right. anything? Um, Again, it's probably going to be somewhere it's around two or three, two and a half or three percent. I still want to get out of this all the time. Depending on what you're taking your listing for and what your ratio of the list size to buy size is. <laughs> then you're going to take your average home price. Okay? In Rockland County, if you don't know your average home price, it's 385000 for this office. Um, it's a little bit closer, I think, to $400 for, um, for the county. So. Somewhere in that range is the number that you should put on the line for average home price. But that number in there is what what your average is, right? What your average sale price is. Yes. So you want to change that to whatever yours is. Then the question is, what percentage of your business is seller focused? Okay. Um, in my case, it's a very high percentage. It's eighty percent of my business is seller focused. So uh, again, it's going to be different if you're a buyer's agent on a team. It's all going to be, it's going to be you know, no seller focus. Um, most agents, the ideal number is 60-40, 60% seller, 40% buyer. Maybe 50-50. Um, you'll, you'll determine that based on, on the business in, in your past uh, history. Your conversion rate. So, listings taken to listings closed. For every listing that you take, what percentage do you close? Now, if you don't know what that is, um, Gary Keller in the MREA book on page 181 shows you some conversion rates. Um, this is a great uh, page, the sticky note in your MREA book. Uh, it's 65% is what Gary Keller says. Now, I would hope that you would have a much higher percentage. Uh, I would certainly think that that would be the goal. And I think that most people who are serious listeners in the room have a higher percentage. You can see that, yes, mine is, well, actually, it's over 90%. I'm not taking a listing list. I had one listing last year. Then your conversion rate. Listing appointments to listings taken. And again, um, in on the same page 181, uh, Gary Keller says you should be getting 80% of your <laughs> listing appointments to listings taken. Again, that's going to depend on how you're doing your business. If you're doing a lot of referral-based business, it's probably higher, okay, as is mine. If you're doing a lot of... Um, Unmet sphere business like Fizbo's expires is probably going to be lower. Okay, so you have to put in a, a, a rate there. Then once you're going to do that, you're going to click submit. Okay, and it should say your goal is going to be up. Your goal has been updated. Now I want you to look on the left side. Okay, um, over here and. This is going to tell you what your profit goal is, 100000 It's going to tell you um, what, what your tax rate, um, your before tax earnings, what they'll need to be, what your estimated taxes will be. Now, giving you your estimated taxes, what does that help you with? Budgeting. Budgeting and paying your estimated tax. Okay? 
If I could tell you one, I could tell you 50 horror stories, okay, of agents who have not paid their estimated taxes, who have not taken at least 30% out of every check that they got, okay, and put it aside and paid an estimated tax on it. Okay, you need to do that. Because otherwise, you are going to start making a lot of money, and suddenly you're going to have a huge, tremendous tax bill. Okay, so you want to make sure you talk to your accountants, you get what your estimated taxes should be, you have an idea. Now, if your accountant says, okay, last year you only have to pay $10,000 in estimated taxes this year, and you come up with this, and this is your goal, and, and you have to pay, and you're saying you're going to have to pay $40,000, well, yeah, you'll have to pay in $10,000 to cover yourself, but you better make sure if you're, if you're on goal that, that you're, putting, you're putting aside a higher amount, because at the end of the day, come April 15th, you're going to have to pay. Uh, your cost of sales, it's going to tell you um, this is your company dollar and your royalty cap. The expenses, it's going to tell you uh, what your expenses based on $7,000 a month, $84,000 expenses, or whatever number you put in. Um, again, this now, this number will go into let me fill in the blank. Your what model? Your Think of business plan. Yeah. Economic. Your, your budget model. Yeah. Your budget model from the business plan. Okay, and you'll then, you know, come with each line item of expenses to support that. Okay, now here's where it starts to get interesting. This has now filled in what your GCI has to be for the year and what your GCI goal for each month is. Okay, so now you suddenly have a benchmark of goals. Now, if you click the down tab, it's going to tell you in red how many closings you need to have for the year uh, on the buyer side, and then how many buyer closings you need to have each month to support that overall goal. Same thing with the listings taken. It's going to tell you how many listings you have to close, how many you have to take, and there, how many you have to take each month? Listing appointments. It's going to tell you how many listings you need to get, how many appointments you need to go on for the year, and how many you need to go on for the month. So now, with the numbers that I've used, I mean, how many people think they can get two listing appointments per month? Come on, we just see more hands than that. Only You're lead generating everything. What? Only two. Now it's going to recap for you. You're listing appointments per month. You're listing taken per month. The closings that you need and the GCI. And this is the four conversations. So if you're in coaching, you, sh you should know that this is usually what your coach is looking for. They want to know how many appointments you've been on, how many listings you've taken per month, <coughs> how many you've closed, and how much you've gotten in GCI. And if you stay focused on that and let all the other busyness filter out of your business, because it will always get done, uh, you will stay on track. Does everybody have their goals? So let me hear some goals. <coughs> um, back there in the back, Israel and Laser. How much GCI do you need every month to meet your goals? You have to look over here. Excuse me. All you have to do is, did you do this? It didn't say. Oh, it didn't say? It's like the yeah. original. It still has to become more music. <laughs> uh, anybody else with a goal they would like to say? Susan Walski. I have my numbers in there. I know I have to go on 11 listing appointments every month. Whoa! Whoa. <laughs> okay. That's a goal. So you have a lot of you have a lot of lead generation. <laughs> I do. Okay. Any anybody else with numbers? John G. You got your numbers there? 
When I hit submit, I got out of that screen, but I already know my numbers in my head, and I already put them in. Mm -hmm. um, it's 20 listing appointments per month with a 290 uh, GCI. Um, and with 20 listing appointments per month, um, will net me hopefully four transactions per month. Okay, great. So now, if you go out of the screen and then you want to get back in to set your goals, you just, um, mine says agent list, but I believe yours says something different in the upper corner. Product Reduction. tracker or practice tracker. Yeah. Or yeah, I can get back into it. You can see mine doesn't go out of here. Mine's a little different because I have access to everything. So if you hit production tracker, it brings you back to that first screen. No, mine's not. Oh, this is okay. you know, if you sign yeah. back yeah. in. Yeah. If you go to the bottom. Yeah. 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 This is back. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So now if you, if you click back to full CGI calculator, Okay, so now the really nice thing about this is that you know on the dashboard on my PW. Are we all together here? No. Yeah. No, no, no. Okay, so let's let's get everybody on this. Start your tracker. You're on it. I'm on this. It's not the same as you were. Okay, so I did it, and then I had to sign back in. It's not coming out the way you Like I said, I had to just keep putting that down. Okay, enter that again, and let me see where it takes you. You're good. That's took me right back to that screen. Okay, click down, hit submit again. Okay, same problem. Um, okay, uh, okay, go back into. Um, oh, there you go. You press submit. If you press yeah. submit, it hurts didn't go either. Mine didn't either. Go back to the welcome to the W. Um, just click now, you can see the like, uh, yeah. so there it is. You were in your case. Yeah. Well, just, that's how they all the time then. So, this, remember, this is still, this is still new. It just yeah. came out this week. So, it was at a ground. I didn't know how it came out. For some reason, it didn't get my ground. I was like, what's the percentage of the Okay, is everybody in with us now on this? On this? Um, Maureen, are they okay in the back? They're okay in the back. Right. Now, what if you don't watch that group in the back? Yes. <laughs> Okay, so you know on my PW home screen, okay, when you look at your dashboard, you look at it and you probably always go, oh, you know, that's a little bit behind because the numbers would not go in there in real time. The numbers were sent to PW and came up as we transmit. So that means you get to the third or fourth week of the month and you would have whatever business you did that month, you wouldn't know it until we are going to transmit and it would be the ninth of the next month. One of the things that Keller Williams is doing with this is they're going to everything in real time, okay? This will show up in real time. Now, you can see on mine, um, I added in how many listing appointments I had. Um, this pulled in how many closings I had in June. This pulled in my June GCI, and it's showing how this, the left side is, is how much is, is actual, and the right side is full. Okay, so it will show you where you are at any given moment against your goal. Now, the key is it will show you in real time provided that you submit a green sheet. Okay, because the system has no way to know if you have something under contract or if you've closed something unless you submit a green sheet. 
Yes, there is. Now, Rosemary, so if you go on an appointment, a listing appointment, and you don't get it today, and they call you back two days later, or you follow up and you go back and get them, is that considered one appointment or two? I would consider it one appointment. You know what? Here's what I always say about questions like that. Whatever you do in your business, do it consistently. consistently. Okay? Because we may do things differently. Okay, we may account for our stuff differently. But if we're consistent with the way that we're doing it, it should all show up in our ratio. Right. Yes, Adrian. I just want to add to his point that we did a tracking in our, by us in our office, and we find that we have three kinds of appointments, three kinds of listing appointments. Because you can have a qualifying appointment, but then you have to go again. And then you can sometimes even have a listing appointment that you know right away you're going to get it. Right. So we, we actually track three kinds of appointments, which makes everything complicated. But if we can find out, like, because there's no clarity in how we figure out to track the appointment. Yeah. So okay, so again, whatever you're going to do, do it consistently in your business. Because what's going to happen when you go back to those goals, Okay, and you go into your ratios. Okay, if you're if you're tracking like Anthony just was talking about, that he actually had two appointments in one. Okay, if he counts that as two to get one listing, and he does that all along the line, it's going to give him a true picture in the ratio, and that ratio is what he's going to then use for next year. Okay, if you only track, count it as one, but you count it as one all the time, the same those same type of appointments it's going to show up in the ratio. So that's really, consistency is really more important than what you're actually going on and trying to figure out is an appointment, is an appointment. Just do it consistently. Yes, if, if you do it as two appointments, it's going to show that your closing ratio is, right. is less. Right. However, yeah. if you're taking a look at it the following year and saying, where can I find the time to go on more listing appointments? then you can say, well, if I learned how to turn a two-step into a one-step, yep. okay, and, and only go on more qualified appointments, then I can get more, better benefit out of my time when you're looking at it. So again, knowing your numbers and how you're tracking them is important. And, and that's why my appointments are at points a month because I'm taking into account, if I'm in a home, and I'm attempting to close, it counts as an appointment for me. Right. <clears throat> now, see, I will tell you that I, I do. Welcome. Thank you for calling voicetext.com. Please enter your security code followed by the telephone line to join your conference. John Davis is going to come on. <laughs> but I will say. Uh, I'm calling Florida. Uh, New York Tri State. Hi, this is Roman. Call can I get your market center, please? New York Tri State. Uh, which market center? Uh, 694. 694. KW Tracks. Excellent. You're the call. Worse. Big KW. Big Brother is watching. Is it, is, is our music? Yeah, we're music. Um, yeah, so I, I was just going to say um, uh, every listing appointment I do is a two step appointment, it's preview, and then it's the actual listing appointment. And it's not that but that, so that's just for me. That's, I'm consistently counting that as one. So how do you, how do you when you get the appointment, you track it as one appointment? But you keep track of the No, I, I just don't even put it in as one appointment until I'm actually going there with the sitting at the table. This is down because this is like craziness that goes on here. You can imagine there's 780 market centers or maybe more than that, 900. I couldn't believe the other day I saw. The company now has over 145,000 associates. Wow. Yeah, I think it was less than that. It was about 50,000 when we started. 
So um, if your company is like, and but the reason also that they track these calls and things is because they want to see if the market centers who are participating and who are engaged, if, if their numbers are going up higher than the people who are not engaged, because that is a benchmark for them. It is what they're doing being successful? You know, are they really helping the market centers? Are they really helping the agents? So, um, you know, I don't like it either. We have to be on the regional calls, and uh, it's like if you're not on the regional calls, it's, so, I've leveraged my assistant now. She has to, go on the call. She has to at least sign in for me because you can listen to them anytime. So my problem is is that John Davis's call with the OPs is at twelve o'clock on Tuesday which is smack in the middle of broker open houses, right? So usually that's a very bad time. So I can't do it then, but I can listen to it, you know, at six o'clock on Friday night. So I, I just have her go on. But if, I'm, if you're not on and signing in on that time, then, <laughs> then, then exactly. they say, well, then you're listening to it, but you really should be counted in because you are listening to it and doing it. <laughs> yeah. Yes, Anthony. No, it's it's the same way that Maps Coaching tracks the statistics for Maps Maps coached agents versus Maps non coached agents. That they outproduce the non coached agents by whatever percentage that is. Because again, they're being held accountable. So they're holding the, the market centers accountable as well. Yes. Let, let me ask you guys a question. How many people in here are in coaching? Every hand should be raised. There's no reason. <laughs> this is our coach. Jesus. That's right. um, I have two every, coaches. Every hand should be raised. I mean, if you if you don't believe that coaching at, at any level in this company, whatever the coach cost of coaching is, because sometimes I hear that from people, like, oh, it's going to cost me something to be in coaching. I don't really want to, you know, do that. The the results always far, far outweigh the cost. Yeah. And, and again, there are coaches that are available or mentors that are available at different at different price points. Okay, and the least you know the least ex, the the smallest investment is finding an accountability partner. If you if you can't do any any anything monetary yet, then find somebody who's going to agree. To hold you accountable and vice versa. Yeah. Okay. And, and I think you, you said a key word. It's not a cost of doing business, it's an, investment. it's an investment in your business. And you know, at this point now with our productivity coaching, there's no upfront cost. I mean, it, you will, your production will far outweigh whatever the, the differential the split is. So I encourage everybody to get in coaching. Yes, Susan. I just want to add. First time I signed up for Mastery Coaching, I was so nervous about the expense, I almost vomited. Yeah, and Mastery Coaching, what she's talking about as a top producer is $1,000 a month. That's how nervous I was. I moved specifically to this market center because of the leadership mentality regarding coaching and growing agents to the highest level. My production has gone three years in Mastery Coaching from making about $25,000 a year to well into three, six figures. That's so. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. The results speak for themselves. Yeah, and let me tell you something. There is nothing as cool as capping and getting those 100% <laughs> checks. <laughs> That's the truth, isn't it? <laughs> Save money for taxes, though, because you will get slammed. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. More money you make, more money you handle slams. Yes, uh, anybody else in the Questions here before John Davis starts. I'm sure he's going to start in the We have about three or four more minutes before he starts. Concerns, ahas from this. What are, what are your ahas? Yes. Uh, is there any way to link the KDNA to this or get the data from the KDNA if you were updating that? Um, I'm not sure. I'm not that familiar with KDNA. Is that a tracker? Yeah, 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 it's different. different. It's much yeah, different. It's much different. I, I think you could probably use the data out of KDNA. It probably gives you some of the ratios that you need to put into the tracker here. Uh, so that's, that's some of that. Just wanna, can I, can I, can I, pass? can I go back into my? Um, I also 
also want to tell you that there is a planning tool. This workbook, okay, um, is $8, okay? If you want one of these workbooks, because uh, we will be ordering a case of workbooks, so normally they're $10 if you order them singly. See Maureen Houlihan, okay? Uh, I happen to have this workbook for the growth initiative in the market center. Mm -hmm. and, and it's great because every month, um, Maureen will be putting out the numbers to you. Like when we talk about the lore numbers, that's gonna help you with some of these tools. Um, she will be putting out those numbers every month and you can put them in here and then put your numbers next to them and see how you're tracking against the market. And again, that's going to, there are built-in graphics. Oh. Okay, um, I want to go into, go up a little bit. I want to go into the one that says agents Wait, this local, uh, local expert? Right side where those arrows are, what is it like a little bit? That's a video. Yeah. Video takes you through it. Um, your business. Your business. Uh, go on listing the presentation of your business with media. The second one, yeah. No, that's all. Oh, yeah, these are cool. I saw these. These are really cool. Okay, these are graphics that you that are templated that you will be able to put into your listing presentation. Okay, um, the tool shows you how to do it. So you're going to show the local market, which is the statistics that Maureen will be giving out to us and publishing. Then your business. You're going to be able to look at that multi-year trend report, okay? So now, for instance, Stephanie, do you have your multi-year trend report? Did you give it to you? Yeah. yeah. So let me just ask you, on listings taken, do you see your year over year there? Yes, down here at the totals? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're, yeah. It's kind of a little bit That's what's weird. Why would it be kind of in 2012? So month over month, Yours increased 25%. So Stephanie could create a graphic showing whatever the market is and then showing hers 25%. So again, these are powerful tools. Most people are visual, learn and, and understand visually. So if you have these types of visual tools to show them, can you look through it? Okay, this is contracts written. You can show your people how many contracts you've written versus the local market. These are all templated. So again, this is how you create your value proposition. And these are all tools that are in there for you to use. really hard to hear you. We're just tuning in. Trust me, John Davis starts. Yes. It's going to be. Oh, yeah. Two o'clock. He should be coming. Anybody with any questions before John Davis starts? Yes. So George, George's question was, are we going to have a financial class for newer agents to tell you what should you be setting up? That's actually part of business planning. So now in the fall, we'll be doing business planning. And um, also, are you in coaching? I am. Okay. So I'm sure that Susan, um, you know, 
Uh, I do not know. Do you know Susan? When is it night? I don't know yet. 